Hi, welcome back to another Terranscapes video. Uh, today I wanted to take you through the Imperial Sector that I've been working on. Uh, I now have all the buildings based and ready for paint and I wanted to show them uh, before any paint got applied to them. And uh, it's been um, a much larger scale project than I really anticipated. Um, the box, uh, I'm sorry, the construction of all of these buildings utilized two Imperial Sector boxes. I have a small handful of bits left over from those two boxes. And I added in some extra bits from one of my own boxes that I had lying around um, for quite some time actually. And built uh, additional frames as I mentioned in a previous video and showed some of those as well. So this has been a massive undertaking. Um, and that didn't stop with the basing as well as I wanted to put in some new features that I got inspired from seeing some other work online and um, really wanted to you know keep the high quality going with this entire project so uh, try to keep this a little bit brief but there's a lot to look at so let's take a look at each building uh, sort of construct uh, one at a time so first um, let's talk about some of the basics about how I based it um, all of the buildings are based on hardboard um, I've taken the buildings, they, they, the customer asked for four large, you know, buildings. So what I've done is built each building as a half and uh, this way it's much easier. You know, you're going to need some space to get in here to place miniatures, uh, to move, you know, vehicles in here and to be able to, you know, reach your arm in there without clinking and clonking on all of the structures over time. The, um, so what I did is I based them on two pieces. This is hardboard, it's eighth of an inch thick. And then that gave me also a little room to add in some other accoutrements. I put in sandbags on a couple pieces, and I'll show you later. I've done um, a piece that's going to get razor wire. The, so the entire footprint for these buildings when placed together, let's take a look at that. I'm not actually sure myself. Just the bases are 19 inches across. Each is 13 and a half wide. Uh, this has been built with shipping in mind as the boxes that I'd like to ship these in are um, 14 inches wide. So I wanted to make the bases close to that dimension so they're not going to shift side to side much in the box. The largest building half here is um, just over 13 inches tall. And again, the box fits 14 inches. So that's going to be a, a nice tight fit. So stuff isn't going to be moving around too much. Uh, this is the largest building of the four major structures, and this is the one that has the stairs um, which uh, connect to it as well. So let's take a look at each of these halves in a little more detail. So here are the stairs. Um, this is a, an old uh, Warhammer model of some sort, but just to give you a sense of scale, my 40K sisters are, are put away right now. I don't collect them, but I have a few that I painted up just for show. Um, in any case, back to the model here. Uh, the stairs posed a unique problem in that I wasn't sure how to base them to go up against the building. I had an original intention of painting this and then being able to play this building without the stairs, say if there wasn't going to be room on the table, let's say a hill began right here or something, you could butt that up against the hill and still make it playable. You'll still be able to do that, but um, I, that meant that in order to have this back edge fit here nice and smooth and maintain the proper height with the join here, I had to leave this without any rubble or gravel on it. Um, and I also had to truncate the base here so that this can overhang onto this section here and still meet flush with the building. I hadn't really anticipated that when I started the stairs construction, so in hindsight, maybe I might have altered that a little bit, but I didn't want to put this building right up against the edge of this as I like uh, seeing a little border around it. I think it frames the building nicely, and it also gave me room for a couple buttresses on the building, which I think, you know, uh, just add another little dimension to them. As the buildings tend to be very flat vertically, um, it's nice to have something coming off of it to break up that sheer flat face. And of course it has a um, balcony on it and you, you might have seen some of this construction before. Um, and of course the panel here and this is this was my idea of like a little uh, execution clock maybe, you know, the countdown to the next execution for the Imperial forces, whatever. In any case, um, and some lights and, and whatnot. But overall, um, I like the way this, uh, you know, looks together. Um, it works very well together, but isn't quite as attractive when placed separately. The stairs, uh, 
the stairs have gotten um, a bit of damage added in, some chips. There's quite a few nicks and scratches on the uh, stepways, but it may not show in this lighting. Um, they'll show much more, uh, obviously, when it's been painted. Um, and a little bit of rubble has been added into some of these spots as well. And as I mentioned before on the stairs, I had um, put in some, you know, plate steel like it was welded over to, you know, make this a more defendable section, but really with the intention of blocking view into the interior of it. So I didn't have to worry about the details in here as, as you know, as it's not going to be, this is a plain back, oh, in frame would help, this is a plain backing. And so it's not going to really, um, you know, be pleasant to the eye if you could see in there. But um, my intention is to add in some of these details to the buildings um, and give some extra areas where it looks like it's been reinforced for a defensive position. But I realize that this is going to make this a real pain to paint. It's going to be a real chore. So what I'm going to do is add some of these features at the uh, in the windows of the buildings after it's painted. And then I can take these, cut them to fit, paint them all separately, and then attach them and then add a little weathering to tie it all together. So that's some features that are going to be on these buildings that are not yet seen. And here you see the interior of this, uh, the front side of this building. And what I've done, I got inspired. Um, I mentioned a, a couple of videos back. Mini Wargaming had some uh, tutorials that they were offering free. I've been carving through those. And um, as I said to somebody who commented, you can always learn something from anybody. Everybody has something to teach you. And one of the things I picked up from them was the thought of having a dual layer floor idea where you have a substrate. And I used foam core as the substrate for the flooring to lift it up a little bit and make it look a little bit more like poured concrete. I hate working with foam core, however, so you'll notice that I've really hid a tremendous amount of the edges of it with rubble um, because I, I anyway, it, it's a, it chips, it tears easily, it's kind of a pain to work with and the texture isn't quite right. But then I overlaid it with um, Plasticard and um, then chip these back a little bit away from the edge. So it gives the thought that there's like tiles that have been put on top of a concrete floor and then the tiles are chipping you know, on their own, irrespective of the floor which has already been damaged. And I did a little section out here just to kind of break up this floor of this area. And then I decided on a couple of these pieces to add in some, you know, after the fact defensive areas. I'm figuring at this point that these are buildings that have been reclaimed and have been cleaned up to some degree because otherwise you normally would see a huge pile of rubble in a spot like this where these walls had all come down. And rather than try to model that and then tie it into the second base nearby and there isn't a lot of room on some of the bases because the buildings are so large, I decided to say the hell with it, it's all been bulldozed away and people have left some of the rubble behind and have piled it up against the sandbags. These are the sandbags that I sell in the store. Um, these are um, uh, ultra uh, tough stone casts, so it's a really hard uh, plaster material. And then what I did is just heaped rubble up against the edges to bring that all up there and give it even a more defensive look. And then I left the interior of it just a little cleared of debris so that you know it looks like people have swept it out, uh, well, kicked it out with their boots or whatever so that they could see in there and uh, you know receive fire whatever um, so again there'll be probably some more additions um, after it's painted to the interior of the building um, as uh, there will be you know materials put into some of the windows whatnot and the plan right now is to go with um, some alternate colors for the interiors and the exteriors I like that I did that on a previous project and I'll probably build upon that for this one as well I'm going to try not to repeat myself as we look at these buildings, so keep all of my previous comments in mind when you take a look at the rest of the structures. Um, so anyway, this is the back of this large building, sort of the, I think this is the administratum, the building that has a, sort of some of the, uh, well, I don't know which buildings these are. Anyway, um, and, um, you know, heaped up a little rubble against the side here. There is a little foam insert um, underneath these to bulk them out a little bit. But in the end, I just kept piling dirt on there and sealing it down and, and debris um, to really, um, you know, give it a little more shape and a little more height. Here you can see a close-up of uh, the rubble pile, so I've added in some pieces from you know various parts of dif different buildings and chunked them up and thrown them in together there. Um, kept it a little clear on this door, um, thinking may, who knows, may still be used. And here's a little bit of a close-up of the interior of the building. Another rubble pile, small one, sort of swept into the middle to make room for troops moving about, and some of the flooring as well. Um, and it looks pretty clean right now, but of course once it's uh, painted and weathered, it's going to look pretty grimy and dirty. 
um, and added in you know a little bit of material that's been cleaned off and stuck into some of the corners which also helped to hide some of the um, joins where the join had maybe had a little gap or whatever I could just push material into that to hide it um, and tried to extend you know the floor in here is pretty big it's too wide so that gives you a lot more room for uh, troops and probably um, when I'm done with these what I'll be doing is uh, I've been working with foam coat today is um, I'll be adding in some ladders and the ladders are not only going to provide more access to the floors but will also provide a little additional structural support for some of these um, overhanging walkways uh, the ladders will be added at the very end to facilitate painting as well and those will be scattered about um, on the buildings in various places and here's the second building this is um, um, with the sprues that have the sort of robed figures on the uh, windows. I don't know which one's the administratum or the, or the basilica, but uh, in any case, um, this building, a um, few less sprues, uh, but it was bulked out with a large balcony out here in the front. Um, the footprint on these two halves combined measures about 18 inches, and again, these are about 13 and a half across. Um, so these are substantial buildings when placed together, but the nice thing about splitting them is if you want to really alternate the layout, you can split these very believably. Um, the bases are tapered on both sides so that they can be arranged in a variety of ways for gaming variation. And here you can see the balcony up close um, with an interesting light bar here. I really like the way that came out. Um, it's got some uh, buttresses put in, left some flat areas. I'd like to add some propaganda posters to this piece particularly. It's got such nice areas to receive those. And I got that tip from uh, Templar Crusade 01, I think is his channel. Um, excellent channel. You should check that out. Um, and um, piled in some rubble. Ooh, this is piled in some rubble and some of these sort of faux alcoves um, along the way. Um, and some of this staining you can see is this has been soaked with a PVA solution. So these are really locked down nice and tight. So this is material that isn't going to come apart later. Threw in a couple of uh, my cast barrels into this rubble pile here. Added some more uh, building material, an old door, whatever. It's been swept up together. This will all get rusted and, you know, detritus coated and uh, whatnot when it's done. And again, um, did the same style flooring in this building as well. Um, left a uh, opening in frame would help. Uh, opening out onto the balcony, balcony here. And real quick, you can see the back side of this building. Um, the back side of this building features uh, rubble piles. I just piled it up against the door. Nobody's coming in and out when they can walk right here. Um, so piled up some rubble around the sides. Added in the second sandbag uh, emplacement on this one. Piled more. Let's get a little close up. There we go. A little more uh, rubble laid up against it to strengthen that position. Give yourself some uh, heavy fire uh, protection maybe. I don't know. Anti-artillery. And um, you can see um, the flooring carries into the interior here as well with some of the tiles and the, the sort of two-step removal process. I could have gone into more removal of tiles and pucked them out in the middle, but at this point, I've really put in some, some kind of crazy amount of, of hours on this. And I think in the end, when it's painted, um, it's going to look so spectacular that, um, you know, at some point, you just got to say, um, I can't really keep going on minuscule details. Let's move it. Let's move this project forward. I'm excited to see these painted up myself. So here we see the third structure. Uh, this is the Manufactorum set of uh, pieces. There are quite a few, uh, fewer of these in the box than the other two, so the building ends up being slightly smaller. Um, but what I did is I tried to capitalize on this open back half here. I made a little corner of the building, and instead I decided let's make this its own unique, uh, you know, sort of structural, you know, defensive area for lack of better name. So what I did is I plopped in a bunch of barrels and then I laid in some doors around this and I'll show you a close up of this in a second. And then I'm gonna ring this with the um, secret weapon razor wire. And this will make a really nice sort of um, troop, you know, hindrance area to receive, you know, assaults and still provide a little bit of cover using the doors as, you know, sort of a um, substitute for sandbags and give something a little bit of a visual difference as well. And you see the uh, front of the building, small rubble pile here. Again, thinking some of the rubble has already been removed. Um, this building has its front fairly intact. Let's turn that around, see the interior here. I did a um, different flooring in the interior here, and I went with 
um, granny grating laid over um, plastic card. So this is not quite as thick as the other floors and has a different on alternate texture on it as well, um, which is kind of neat because it captures some of the rubble uh, falling into the little pits and holes of the granny grating. And this is going to match the walkway texture and kind of give the, the pieces an overall industrial feel. Um, the close-up of the back side of the building shows the same um, style of flooring and then you can see um, a little bit closer the look of the area that will be strewn with razor wire um, when it's uh, finally done. Threw in a little rubble you know, piece, it's just been sort of hobbled together real quickly to form a, a quick defensive area to give troops uh, something a little more hazardous, hazardous to climb over. And here you can see the, you know, another corner of it, another rubble pile. And here we see the um, fourth building, and not much has changed on this building since the last video. I gave it some real thought about how much to damage it and, and affect it, and I decided that this building, um, it, it's going to be complicated to damage some of these areas without compromising their, their believability. If I bring you in close here, while I fly you in on the camera here, um, certain parts of these add-ons that I've tacked onto the wall are hollow. And so once they get breached, they're not going to look like they've got, you know, electrical components in them, you know, whatnot. So I was really loath to start carving into these kinds of things. And um, the same goes for the tanks, you know, rupturing these and allowing you to see into them. It could be, you know, a little more difficult for me to make believable. I've never done something like that before. And there's already so much going on with these. I thought, well, let's make this its own, you know, like the airship shipped in this building, quickly got it working to sort of repower, you know, nearby areas for the city, process the ore that they're mining nearby, whatever it is, and um, and then it's a relatively new structure that hasn't gone through the orbital bombardment that the other pieces have. Um, so I based it very simply, um, not a lot of rubble on it, just mashing texture, and kept it, you know, pretty much intact as it was. The other reason made me think about that is this is the building that connects by the walkway. So let's set that walkway up and you can see all those pieces together now. So here you can see the walkway now in place um, connecting these two structures. Uh, the nice thing is, of course, the walkway doesn't need to be used uh, because uh, you know the buildings are going to look fine without it. So it's an optional piece. It has an overall length connecting the two buildings of about um, 16 inches or so. So that's pretty substantial and will allow troops to pass underneath, but I think it's going to block a lot of the vehicles, particularly the larger ones. This has a height of about two and three quarter inches here and about three and a quarter inches there. I don't know, a rhino might be able to fit through there, but I, I don't know um, the height of some of the 40k vehicles, so they may not be able to pass through there. Of course, you could always just lift this up if you wanted to make it playable for some reason or, you know, it's up to you how you wanted to use it, of course. Um, but anyway, that gives you a sense of what the two buildings look like uh, once they're connected. And that was the thinking is that, you know, they wanted to bring this back up to, you know, bring this power source in, um, dropped in um, some new bridges that haven't really been damaged, connected them to the old uh, manufactorum for whatever reason. You fill in the mysterious reasons why anything is done in the 41st uh, millennium. And uh, and then, uh, anyway, it gives you a really unique kind of a walkway, which I wanted to include some kind of an upper, you know, passageway in at least some of the terrain. So, hopefully you've enjoyed taking a look at these, and um, hopefully the customer um, likes some of the uh, things that I've done with these buildings. Uh, like I said, it's been a, a quite a large project to work on, and um, I don't think painting is going to be any less of a challenge. I really want to work on um, lots of weathering uh, techniques. Um, the buildings are going to be featured in a snow theme to match a realm of battle board set that I did for this customer. So these are going to have snow applied to them after the fact. Um, and I'd like to utilize some rusting techniques that are new to me, the salt method. I, I've got a great tutorial that I've um, pinned on my desktop to show me how to do some new rusting techniques. Um, I've got the new materials from Model Mates, their weathering liquids, which are really interesting products, and I'm really excited to use them on this. Uh, I got some new um, thinner for my um, airbrush paints, some new airbrush paint colors. Um, so 
lots and lots of new stuff to put on these buildings to really make them uh, showy. So I'm really looking forward to that. So um, once this work uh, gets approved at this level, we'll get some uh, primer out. We'll start getting these buildings painted up and I'll bring you in as soon as um, there's a good, good stage of work to take a look at. So thanks for watching. Keep your eye on the channel. I have definitely got some other videos coming out as fast as I can shoot them. And so keep your eye on the channel for those and I'll talk to you soon.